Hey there everyone, Nupkex here and welcome to a quick tips video for the Ivress campaign, the Eltharion campaign, which is coming out tomorrow in the Warden and the Paunch DLC for Total War Warhammer 2. So I just want to show you guys what you want to be looking to do in this campaign to give you the best start possible and to, uh, yeah, give you the best chance to succeed in this campaign. Also some tips and things that I wish I knew about how stuff worked, some kind of sneaky things um, that kind of took me a bit by surprise that weren't obvious that I think will help you out a lot if you know how they work. So. Um, okay, great. We got some quests and, and some lore and stuff coming in at the start. That's fine. By the way, if you do want to check out the full campaign, uh, I do have the full campaign up on my channel as well. So you can take a look at my playthrough, watch alongside yours uh, if you want some tips there. Um, what I want to cover first with Altharion, let's talk first about your armies. Like what sort of armies, what sort of units are we going to be using as Altharion? Because as you can see here already, we have a bunch of unique units that are going to be coming with Altharion. Plus of course, the new units coming with this DLC. So if we look at Altharion, he has the Warden of Tor of Rest trait. Crucially here, he's got bonus leadership for spear infantry and rangers, melee defense for spear infantry and rangers, and he also causes fear fighting against greenskins for his army. So spear infantry are going to be really, really good. Rangers are also one of the new units. In terms of his unique skills, uh, up here, so more damage for him. Uh, over here, he gets bonus armor for shielded units, unending volley, so this gives you ammo replenishment um, for missile units. This one is, is stuff for defending and building walls. Um, these are some, some benefits. Nothing too important here. Uh, they're the main things he has, right? Then Grim Discipline is going to give expert charge defense to everybody. Grim Discipline is just this. It's just martial prowess, but much better uh, for fighting in melee. And then he also gets this, the dedication to Ladriel, which has two levels in it, right? Two levels, which will give you vigor loss reduction over mist walkers and give them weapon strength and missile strength, okay? So this is going to be really important. So we know from looking at him, he's really good with spear infantry, okay? Uh, he's really good with shielded units. Uh, he's really good with ranged units, and he's really good with mist walkers. Ultimately, I think you're going to want your Eltharian army to be almost entirely mist walkers. Well, what are mist walkers? Well, mist walkers come from Tor Ivres. We can see at tier three, four, and five, we actually get to train units from Tor Ivres and from Tor Ivres alone. So, example, well, Sardanath, I guess it's not a capital. You can't quite see, but they are just from Tor Ivres or a special building chain. I'll show you later, which you have to unlock. Um, but we get a variety of mist walkers. A very quick look at them. You get the faith bearers, which you start off with. Right, we start off with some faith bearers. So they've got a big unit size, plenty of armor, silver shields. They actually have missile resistance as well. And they start with Frenzy, uh, which gives them melee attack, uh, charge, and uh, weapon damage as well. They've got pretty good melee attack. So they're going to kind of shred. They're going to be awesome against low tier infantry. The one thing that they do lack is armor piercing damage. You know, 12, it's not bad. It's not amazing though, but they're going to be a really solid frontline for you uh, throughout pretty much the entire game. So you can get them from tier three uh, in Tor Ifres. Whoop. Go over here. You can get the uh, Spire Guard. These are very, very similar to Lothar and Sea Guard. Very similar to Lothar and Sea Guard. They've got more range though, and they have absolutely tons of ammunition and an usually high amount of ammunition. Uh, they've got anti large. They are spears. So here's the thing, right? They're spear infantry. So there you go. You're getting those benefits from Eltharion's uh, skills to boost their spearness. Um, these ones have swords, so they're not going to have the spear benefits, but they do have shields, so they're going to get the bonus armor from being shielded units. Um, at tier 4, you can get sentinels. These guys are even longer range, and they have shield breaker ammo, which will lower the missile parry with shields, and they also, of course, have armor piercing ammo. So they're going to do plenty of damage, and they're going to reset really up your other uh, your other range units to do an absolute ton of damage. So they're going to help your Spire Guard really pump out damage onto uh, units as well, which is nice. So they're going to work really well in combination. These guys have spears and shields, so they're going to get benefits from all of Eltharion's different skills and their Mist Walkers. Then we have the final infantry Mist Walker. This one is more niche. These guys are like uh, bows and dual swords, so they can shoot while they're, they can move invisible, hidden in terrain. They can fire while moving. They have very short range, uh, but they can fire while moving. Uh, their big deal is that they're anti-infantry, okay? And they have penetrating projectiles, so they can shoot through multiple targets. They have bonus for infantry on their ammo, and they have bonus for infantry on their weapon. You can see their weapon strength is super high, and their melee attack is super high as well. Their speed's also pretty good. They have a small unit size, though. So these guys are not going to hold the front lines at all. What you're going to want to do with these guys is flank them around with stock, with Vanguard deployment, get them behind the enemy front line, shoot them in the back a bunch, and then you can charge in and rip them to shreds as well with a rear charge too. These are like anti-infantry flanking units. 
So they're going to be very powerful, more so in like the mid to late game. And then finally, of course, the ultimate unit you can get at tier five, the Knights of Torgival. Uh, you get three uh, three knights on griffins, basically. Three nobles on griffins. So they're extremely strong, as you can see from their stuff. Like armor piercing, massive weapon damage. Uh, they're super fast going around. Great melee attack, great charge bonus. Melee defense, not so good. Uh, but they do have a 25% missile resistance. They cause fear and terror. So yeah, they're going to be super good. You're not going to have many of them, though. All of these units come with a unit cap. A unit cap. You can only recruit so many of them. Uh, but we can improve that through some specific research, which I'll come to in a little bit. So for example, well, okay, this, yeah, you can't actually see it here, it doesn't show you, um, but you do have a unit cap in terms of these. You'll be able to field a full army for Eltharion though, without too much hassle, it's not too bad. Okay, so that's looking at the army and what you're going to want to do. You're going to be uh, looking towards those Mistwalkers. Now, in the short term, obviously turn one, we're going to throw in uh, Henry Cavill over here. Henry Cavill, the uh, the White Wolf. <laughs> love it, absolutely love it. Um, so you're going to throw him into your army. You're going to start off with a really, really nice army. In fact, if I just show you real fast, uh, like for this first battle, your army's way stronger than his, for example. You're going to absolutely smash him. No problem. Don't worry about it. It's going to be really, really nice. And you're going to take Tralnia and secure your province. No problem as well. Um, <clears throat> you start off with this in here. I recommend grabbing... So you're going to win this fight. And we're going to actually take him captive. I'll talk about that in a second. Then on your first turn, I recommend grabbing a couple of rangers. They're going to basically do what these um, these Mistwalker guys, what these uh, the Skyhawks are going to do, but they're going to do it from the start of the campaign. They're really cheap. Their upkeep is really low. Their initial cost is a little bit higher than Spearmen, but their upkeep is really low. They're the cheapest upkeep unit that the High Elves have. Super, super cheap. Um, and of course, Eltharion himself... He's giving these bonuses to his rangers as well. So I recommend getting at least two. You could even get more than that. You could grab just three on the first turn. And then after that, you could actually rip this out of Tor of Rest, okay? Upgrading this to tier two, it's gonna give you Lothar and Seaguard, which is not that useful, really. Um, and Shadow Walkers and Lothar and Seaguard with shields, again, they're not gonna be that useful. Like. You're going to use them in your other armies, but you don't really need that to be in your capital where you can stick better buildings. Uh, and especially because you're going to be training Mistwalkers from here, which basically, like, these are basically, you know, Sentinels and Spire Guard are basically Lothar and Seaguard, but better. Um, they're just limited in how many you can have. So it's not really a priority to get this. I would build up this to tier three. I think you do have a quest to get a rally field um, at some point. And of course, Silver and Guard are one of the new uh, units. They're basically supercharged spearmen. You start off with one as well. So they're really good too. Um, so I do recommend getting that at some point, probably in Southern Ivress, I recommend building that one uh, in Carinthel or Shrine of Loek pretty early on. So you can get some Silver and Guard at tier three. Uh, um, and yeah, that's what you're going to look like. I, you know, you're gonna grab some rangers here. They're gonna be really strong, like whatever three rangers, then probably rip it out. Then you can just fill in the rest with archers and spearmen, which you can train from here, and you can have a really good army. You know, you got these two heroes, maybe eight frontline, uh, and then maybe six range units, and then some some flanky bo uh, boys, plus your warlines and your phoenix. And you're gonna be good. And that's gonna be a good early game army. When you get into the mid game, you're gonna start putting in mist weavers. Uh, and Silver and Guard, so maybe like four Faith Bearers and four Silver and Guard. It's going to be a really good front line for Altharion. Going to be really tanky on the front. Uh, some Archers in the back. You can eventually replace those Archers with uh, Spire Guard and with Sentinels, and that's going to be really good. And um, yeah, I mean, that's a really solid army. Ultimately, you're going to have Miss Walkers for days. Um, in this first battle, I showed it uh, really fast, and then I cancel this. You can capture, you can capture with the Warden's Cage, guys. This is really important. So, when you get into combat, once per battle, you can use the Warden's Cage to capture an enemy, lord, lord or hero. It lasts for 25 seconds, it stops them moving, and it massively lowers their melee defense and armor. Um, especially in this first battle, obviously you saw how favorable the balance of power is. Um, so it's going to be quite easy to capture him. Just make sure... I messed this up my first time. I thought 25 seconds was a long time. It's actually a lot less time than you think, especially early game when your units aren't going to do all that much damage and you don't have that, ma that many units to focus fire. So definitely save this until the Lord is very, very low on health. Um, you can use the pause button, you know, on lower difficulties for sure to help you land this one. You definitely, definitely want to um, capture Greebits if you can. It will make the early game really nice for you. Um, and you want to use this in every battle you can, really, to capture lords or heroes. Uh, any extra ones or any ones that are unimportant will be executed. They're going to give you really nice benefits, um, just free influence and, and all, all sorts of good stuff. Now, the big thing about them is they go into Athel Tamara over here. 
This looks more complicated than it is. This is your prison. You can unlock a second slot so you can have two prisoners. Um, you can choose to uh, indoctrinate them so they'll go back to their faction. You get vision of their faction and you can you can steal some of their factions and money per turn. Um, useful against bigger factions, not super useful early game. Um, you can just you can execute people, you can let them go, you can do all sorts of things for benefits. The main thing you want to, to do though and you want to focus on is interrogation. If you capture him in your first battle, you want to grab the interrogation chamber. You start off with five warden supplies, okay? You start off with five. So uh, you can just upgrade this if you capture him. If you don't capture him, uh, then maybe you want to uh, upgrade the Shrine of Loek instead. This is going to be your other thing you're going to upgrade, right? This will give you influence per turn, which is just really, really nice. Um, that lets you uh, recruit better lords. Uh, lords cost influence with good traits to unlock. Um... Heroes, of course, are going to cost... Well, I can't show you them, but heroes cost influence to recruit. And you can use influence to improve uh, relationships with factions or, you know, make other factions hate each other, whatever you want to do. It's really, really nice. It's been reworked in this patch uh, with this DLC. So you get lots more influence now, and it's it's just really, really... It's it's really excellent to get. Um, so, yeah, you're going to capture him. <clears throat> if you do interrogate him... You can interrogate this green skin guy, keep him here. Interrogation is just like a constant effect. So you need to keep him in your prison and it's gonna give the wall ability to all of your mist walkers, which will give them a, a button you can press, an ability you can press, which will give them massively boosted melee attack, armor, uh, not armor, excuse me, armor piercing damage, weapon damage. They're gonna make them an absolute melee monster. So your, your faith bearers are gonna become these melee shredding machines. It's really, really good. The second prisoner, so you want a green skin prisoner. Um, then the second prisoner you want is a uh, vampire coast prisoner uh, and that will give you the more powder ability which will make your ranged units much much better uh, mist walkers only only mist walkers only these guys get them which is why i wanted to show you them at first so you're going to want um wall from the green skins to boost your faith bearers or to boost any of these guys that get into melee combat and you're going to want more powder to boost because obviously there's loads of range you're going to want more powder to boost all of the uh, ranged ones with the more powder ability um you can also capture uh, some norse skins Norskins give you Berserk, which is a good substitute for Wall. The thing that caught me by surprise, so here's a, here's a tip, right? If you have a prisoner in here and you destroy their faction, this happened to me several times by mistake. If you destroy their faction, the prisoner disappears because the faction is gone. So uh, it might, it's kind of a bit buggy. It's a bit wonky. They just magically disappear and they're gone. You get nothing. It's really odd. Um, so just watch out for that. If you're going to destroy the faction, you probably you just want to execute the prisoner or let them go or whatever uh, before you destroy the faction because otherwise they're going to go for free. I expect that to be patched. So if you're watching this a bit in the future, I mean, hopefully as quickly in the future, this might not happen. Um, so for example, you capture Grebits. Uh, if you once you take these back, which you do want to do, um, Grebits is then going to he's going to disappear because his faction is going to be destroyed. You're going to have to find a new green skin or just, you know, slap a Norse skin in there. That will also give you a nice melee buff. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, another thing that, again, hopefully will be fixed is if you capture a legendary lord. This happened to me with Aroness Assault Spite. Um, obviously, when you defeat a legendary lord in combat, it gives your lord a trait, which is really nice. And you want to get as many of those as possible. If you capture them into prison, uh, it doesn't give you that trait at the moment, at least when I'm recording. So just bear that in mind. Again, hopefully that will be patched so that when you do capture them, you will get the trait as well. Um, but yeah, that is something to, to just be aware of. So again, like I destroyed Sartosa and my campaign was a bit unlucky because I destroyed Sartosa and then uh, Tyrion destroyed the Galleon's graveyard. So it's kind of like I have to go all the way over to the Vampire Coast to get uh, a Vampire Coast captain to get that buff uh, in the prison for my Mistwalkers. So for me, I didn't bother. That is something you might, might want to bear in mind. It might be worth keeping Sartosa alive um, just for that buff for your Mistwalker units. Possibly, quite possibly. Uh, so there you go. That is something to consider. Um, again, at the start of the game, you're going to obviously finish this province. This is going to be your breadbasket province. I mean, you've got docks, you've got the gold mine, Tor of Rest. Uh, we'll give 50% income from all buildings. Uh, and, and you can recruit Miss Walkers here. So I really recommend that you just focus Tor of Rest really on just making you a butt ton of money. It's super easy to defend, thanks to the Mist of Ifres. You'll get these just by upgrading Athel Tamara, and you'll get Warden Supplies to upgrade Athel Tamara. You can see um, just by leveling up heroes, uh, indoctrinating prisoners that you capture, so any extra prisoners, uh, destroying greenskin settlements, completing objectives, so all the quests will give you loads, um, and all that sort of stuff. Executing prisoners, any extra prisoners, that sort of thing. Um, all these quests, loads of these quests will give you extra stuff, so you'll get lots of Warden Supplies. Um, as you upgrade stuff, you'll get benefits. So defense level one will give... 
tour of rest so the sit just the city itself and the little region around it not the whole province so not these two just tour of rest we'll get the mist uh, the mist benefits at level two it will be all of rest region so northern and southern of rest all all the three cities in each one all the regions we'll get it and then eventually at max at level three it'll be all the outer ring of ultwan for you and your uh, military and defensive allies um, so you're going to grab Northern Ifress. You're going to come down here. You're going to grab Southern Ifress. At that point, you're pretty good, to be honest. Like, that, <laughs> that's your campaign pretty good. You'll make an absolute crazy amount of money. Like, an insane amount of money from the Tour of Rest region. It, this is the, the bread basket to end all bread baskets. Um, you can start building some uh, some military buildings down here. In Southern Ifress, it's kind of helpful. Like, you can train up armies in Shrine of Loek, and then, hey, you're able to hit the Southlands pretty easily. Uh, from there, it's kind of up to you. For me, what I ended up doing in my campaign, I did come to the north. I ended up, I think, confederating uh, Kothik, uh, though the um, uh, Scaling had taken Mistnar, so I, I went to war with Scaling as well. But I ended up taking Kothik. There is a landmark here for nobles, the hero type, which is quite nice. And you know, obviously, the, both of these are ports, and... Uh, this has salt, so it's going to make you some good money as well. It's a nice little region. Um, over here, uh, Albion, the region, apart from the city itself, this is, like, unhab uninhabitable. So, honestly, I don't think it's even worth uh, taking these. I recommend it's probably worth going to war with them and raising these settlements and just destroying them. It's not even worth taking Albion. It's more of a hassle than it's worth. So I just raise them and leave them empty, so you just don't have to worry about this eastern side at all. Um, you can capture one of these guys if you want. You can feel free to raise them, but they'll probably go to war with Avalorn. Like, Avalorn will probably destroy them for you, so you don't even have to worry about it. Um, there is a Scourge of Cain up here. Again, Avalorn will probably deal with them. Uh, Trace. Trace is a good region, which gives you benefits to some of the new units, like the war lines and stuff, which you might want to get. You can probably confederate with them. Like, Trace Trace quite likes you. Right, they, they quite likely. You, you've got treaties with Trace and non-aggression pact to start things off. You do have a trade agreement with Kathik, um, and, and they like you a lot too. So it's going to be quite possible, especially with influence, uh, to confederate with these guys. You probably just want to ally with Tyrion, uh, with the Tain, which is over here, formerly Lothurn. You probably want to ally with Avalorn and trade with them. Uh, trading with the High Elves is going to make you a butt ton of money. So between Northern Ivress, uh, and Southern Ifress, and between trading with the other High Elves, uh, you're going to have tons of pals, and then you can confederate these guys to expand a bit up this side, and you're going to be fine. Probably kill these guys. Now, Grom's Arrival, this is your main quest, okay? So, you got quests to go and destroy these little things. So, like, Karak Arad, this is Grom's capital, or where Grom starts. It's not his capital, where he starts. I think, actually, sorry, it is technically his capital, uh, but obviously the main... Uh, is there's like a dwarven city down here which he takes early which is going to be the the main region of the province but that is his capital uh spectazuma is miles away <laughs> so good luck galbaros is pretty easy to get to this is just uh in the the top of the southlands over here so this is quite easy to get to you just have to watch out for the pirates uh, and you do get some nice stuff you get a bunch of money and you get into the badlands so when you uh if you do take an occupy galbaros it gives you permanent buff of one warden supply per turn and it gives you public order in all your provinces and a bunch of capacity for all of those Mistwalker units. So that's going to leave you in a pretty good spot, right? Uh, I do recommend going for Galbaros pretty early on. Uh, and then you can... I, I After that, I went for, for Grom. I went for Grom and took out uh, Grom's region, which again is, is pretty nice. Uh, and you're going to be pretty well set. You're pretty much just building up Tour of Rest. That's going to be your goal. Building up Athel Tamara. It's going to be a very defensive campaign. Once you upgrade these, you're going to be good. Interrogation Chamber is good. Over here, I didn't talk about these, I don't think. I did a couple of takes of this video, so I'm kind of tripping over myself in terms of remembering what I've covered. Uh, Mistwalker command posts and, and recruit rank. This is okay. This lets you uh, train Mistwalkers in other regions, uh, in other provinces, sorry. So, like, you can't build it in the uh, Northern of Rest region because it's built in to your capital. Um, but you can build it in other ones, which increases the unit cap and stuff like that. I think, honestly, this is more useful probably in the uh, mortal empires campaign where you've got a dual start so eltharion himself is over, way over in the badlands so for example you could use this to uh it, it, this building is a tier three four and five building chain tier three four and five so it mirrors the capital mirrors what you do in the capital three four five um so that's gonna be useful to build it in the badlands for eltharion for example um 
not too important honestly in this one the recruit rank is nice though but you know you don't need to rush for it at all uh over here this just increases your capacity for faith bearers so that's okay uh you might want to grab this at tier three to get more faith bearers that could be worthwhile um this increases the range troops so this is also you know again pretty good but this is not really that relevant until maybe tier three for more spire guards but mostly for tier four and five right mostly uh mo not five but mostly tier four when you get the sentinels because the sentinels are awesome they have shields they have spears and they're ranged and they're really good at range so they're the main ones so that's more for tier four and then this is really nice this gives you melee attack leadership and melee defense for all your mist walkers so again this is going to be whenever you actually do have mist walkers in your army more than this one unit that's when it's going to get really good uh, and ultimately your late game army again i recommend you know a few silveran guards are, are nice as like a, a solid super tanky spear line on the front to help with the anti-large which these guys can't really handle these guys will shred infantry on the front line early game just some archers you can ultimately replace those archers with your fancier mist walkers um your phoenixes are good too i mean for me i ended up doing the final battle which is this you can trigger it early if you want to otherwise it automatically will happen in 150 turns we have to defend to our in a quest battle um, I ultimately did it with just a Miss Walker army, plus a couple of Arcane Phoenixes, and obviously Eltharion and, and Henry Cavill. I also gave him a mage. Sticking a mage in is pretty good too. Uh, pro tip for the mages. Uh, I can't show you here, but you can get a mage of every spell school, which mirrors this. Um, the fire mages in particular, and only the fire mages can get uh, the heroes, not the lords, right? The hero fire mages can get a sun dragon mount, level 22. The other mages ca can't get that. They can't get that. Only fire mages. All of the arc mages, every single one gets a moon dragon. Okay, so it doesn't matter. You can choose whichever arc mage you like. I mean, I personally like heavens an awful lot. Uh, death is not bad. Shadows is good too. I mean, you can kind of just choose whichever you personally like, to be honest, right? Um, they're already good. Uh, and the arc mages are extremely strong. I recommend them, honestly, over the princes and the princesses. I, I think the arc mages are just straight up better. They're straight up better. Um, they're just as good, pretty much, in melee combat once they get to that level. Uh, and the trait that you're really looking for, if you do want to use them, oh, where is it? You can get one that's really, really damn good. Uh, uh, here we go. Here's a couple of really good ones. Entrepreneur, income from all buildings in the local province. So that's obviously amazing. Um, and then incendiary is insane as well. 100% weapon strength. They do double damage and flaming attacks. Uh, and it gives you melee attack, melee defense, charge bonus plus 100. Like, it's crazy. Um, this is obviously pretty rubbish while they're just the, the regular arc mage. But once you get them onto uh, onto a dragon at high level, they become disgusting. This is, this is like, they become a moon dragon with double damage and flaming attacks. Like, yeah, it's, it's insane. It's insane. So that's sort of some recommendations with that. Um... But yeah, so that's going to be your plan, right? That's going to be your plan. You're going to take this region here. You're going to take Southern Ifres, and then you're pretty good. Northern Ifres is going to be your money-making region. Uh, Southern Ifres, you can use to get some uh, some some uh, some little uh, some, some military stuff in there. Again, recommend. Uh, the Grove is really good for mid-game to supplement. This is going to give you um, stuff that will really nicely supplement. And they're the new units for the camp for the DLC as well. They'll supplement your Miss Walker as well. You get more War Lions, which are super quick. Uh, flanking absolutely rip infantry to shreds they bring tons of armor piercing tons of uh speed so they can you know you can make them rip apart archers you can make them rip apart rear charge and rip apart infantry infantry they're gonna be really really good a really good complement you're gonna want some silveran guard obviously they're really nice now as well they're basically better than spearmen not as good as phoenix guard uh but they're you know they're a lot cheaper and you get them way way earlier uh i can't show them uh great eagles though are fine as well they're not too bad you could throw one in uh, it might be worth it all right it, it's okay they share a lot of tech as well with the, with the lines and then you got white lines of trace these are they've been buffed a bit and they're going to be nice great axe infantry so heavy weapons uh, armor piercing infantry that you could stick in as well if you're having trouble with some heavily armored infantry you can get them pretty early on you've got a quest to uh, to build one of these groves you got a quest to get another war line so you're going to want to get that and that's going to be pretty nice right I think that's pretty much all you guys need to know uh, for this. In terms of research, actually, not too important uh, with Eltharion because the Mistwalkers, none of this stuff really affects Mistwalkers, okay? None of it really affects Mistwalkers too much. You don't have to worry about it that much. You're going to focus more on the cultural stuff. Uh, and again, I do recommend with Eltharion, Root Marcher. I recommend grabbing Militia Master just for the early game. Like, three points in that. Gives you a massive buff to your Spearmen, Silveran Guard, Rangers, Archers, uh, Lothar and Seaguard. You're not really going to use Lothar and Seaguard, but the other ones are like the 
your early game. This is such a huge buff. It makes your early game so much better. I recommend that. Obviously, grab all of his unique stuff. Uh, and then you can like up his his physical stuff himself. You could also you could go into like lightning strike and things like that if you wanted to. But I do recommend just three of these. You don't need the rest. None of these, none of the other red line stuff really, unfortunately, buffs his um buffs his uh his mist walkers. So research and the red line, not really gonna help your mist walkers, which is gonna be the bulk of your forces. Uh but your other armies are not gonna use mist walkers much because you're gonna want those unit caps going into Eltharion. And there you go, guys. Hopefully that was some help to you. Uh, looking at what you might want to do for Eltharion. I wish you the best of luck with your campaign. It's a super, super fun campaign. A nice sort of defensive campaign. You can have Eltharion himself with his unique units go on these sort of crusades to hunt down the green skins. It's awesome. I think it'd be super fun to play on Mortal Empires as well, the dual start. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.